But social media really came into its own, in my experience, when it was spontaneous, when individuals used it to connect to each other and to people around the world. During and after our disasters, there were numerous examples of Twitter and Facebook making connections that informed and protected and empowered people. Organ whole organisations started as a result of uh, these, uh, these discussions at the time. One example is an organisation called Baked Relief. Baked Relief is now an established movement of hundreds of people who baked and cooked for people directly affected by the flood as well as volunteers and emergency workers. It started with a young Queensland uh, mother uh, who felt she needed to do something during the floods. She understood that the vo volunteering clean-up effort was going to be hot, hard and hungry work and she came up with the idea to start baking some food for those volunteers. She also understood that there were many people like her who because of caring for small children or their own frailties uh, wanted to help in some way but were just not able to be on the end of a shovel uh, and uh, in the mud and tropical heat. She put the word out about what she was doing on her blog and on Twitter and on Facebook and offers of help and baking came rushing in. Within just 48 hours, Danielle had, uh, was coordinating 300 people who had registered and were all at home baking their hearts out. On January the 18th, uh, the hashtag on Twitter, Baked Relief, was the number two trending hashtag in Australia, with hash Queensland floods in the number one spot. It has grown now beyond imagining since then and uh, Baked Relief is now in the hands of hundreds of home cooks and bakers and is still reaching people who are recovering from floods and cyclones. They even went and helped out in Christchurch after this year's terrible earthquake and the organisation is now determined to continue to support families who are affected by natural disasters. We also know that more than 80,000 people formally registered with Volunteer in Queensland, which is our central volunteer organisation, uh, during the disasters. And there's anecdotal evidence from Volunteer in Queensland that social media again played an important role. It mobilised people because they mobilised their friends and their followers. And Volunteer in Queensland tells us that when people registered or rang to find out how to go to somewhere where they could help, they would said that they'd read about it on Facebook or they were answering a, um, a Twitter. On a more local level, people, would, uh, people whose homes had been affected used Twitter, they went onto their Facebooks, they sent out a message out into the, uh, the universe and said, we need help in our street. And within hours, uh, they would then have up to 30 volunteers of what we now call our mud army there in the street working with them. Old media and new media intersected during the floods and cyclones with uh, one of our FM radio presenters, Michelle Laurie, keeping many Queenslanders informed of updates through Twitter. Um, and, uh, through Twitter. Laurie con gathered a massive following as people quickly learned how well she was using her networks to spread information that they thought the public might need. Details about uh, on such things as where to buy ice and where bread was still available became very critical information to people in the suburbs of Brisbane during that time. And Michelle Lowry was able to successfully disperse that to many needy Queenslanders. She was particularly active in assisting pet owners to find animal friendly evacuation centres during the floods. During those difficult uh, weeks I couldn't uh, help but be struck by how powerful these networks are and how much connection and comfort they were bringing to people. It seemed to me that we so often uh, blame these technologies for reducing our people's skills. We worry so much about whether these technologies are um, de-socialising our children, if you like, uh, and um, how much they might be replacing human contact. It seemed uh, that in, during these disasters, as these disasters brought people together, People who had uh, politely been waving at neighbours for more than a decade suddenly found themselves side by side in each other's bathrooms cleaning out their cupboards. And there are many, many stories of new friendships being forged through those shared troubles. Equally, there's no doubt that thousands of these connections were generated and nurtured by social media as people shared very frightening experiences and they shared those experiences often across thousands of kilometres. Many of these groups are still in touch with each other, they're still sharing information and stories and support as they recover.